Agent, you need to cut off the primary escape route. Take out the boats that got docked southwest of your position. Welcome back to another Division 2 upload. I'm Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and in today's video, I'm going to show you my one shot sniper build setup. Now, for those of you that were with me for my Hardcore Chronicles episodes, where I leveled up a character from 1 to 30 and then through all the world tiers without dying, you got to see me do a bit of sniping. But to be totally honest, I am not a top tier sniper, and I actually force myself to use sniper rifles to keep my scope aim on par. But before we begin today's upload, I would like to say another massive thank you as the channel blew right past the 50,000 subscriber mark and it has continued to steadily grow. But just in case you are not yet a sub and like this type of intensive division content, please smash the sub button. And don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another upload notification from my YouTube channel. Okay, let's get this build guide started. So here is the overview of the build I am currently using, and for reference, this is for Title Update 10, and I will explain my gear choices later in the build guide, as I have done extensive testing and poking around the Division community for comparison. So the build is centered around using four pieces of the Aces and Eights gear set, the Walker Harris & Co. named body armor, Chain Killer, and finished up with a Providence backpack with Vigilance. These Aces and Eights pieces can be found in the open world by farming any mission or zone that is currently featuring gear sets as targeted loot, while the Chain Killer and Providence pieces can be farmed in their respective targeted loot zones. So for the mask, I am using the first of four Aces pieces with weapon damage and headshot damage as the attribute. I have finished off the mask with a headshot damage offensive mod. For the holster, it is the same principle of using Aces along with weapon damage and headshot damage and I am still on the hunt for a better Aces holster with max weapon damage to replace this one. The gloves are the third piece of Aces gear with weapon damage and headshot damage, and like the holster, I will be on the hunt for gloves with max weapon damage. And the knee pads are the fourth and final piece of Aces gear for this build with a max weapon damage core attribute along with headshot damage. The breakdown and rationale for using Aces and Eights are as follows. The two-piece grants the build plus 15% marksman rifle damage, which will increase our overall weapon damage output. The three-piece gives us plus 30% headshot damage, and that is really what this build is centered around. Now, prior to title update 10, this three-piece bonus used to be a multiplicative damage bonus, and it was extraordinarily strong. But as part of TU10, it was corrected to now be additive. Still, at plus 30%, it is a large portion of headshot damage and needed for this build. The four-piece bonus activates Dead Man's Hand that uses a card flipping mechanic to add amp damage to our build. Landing headshots will flip two cards at once, and after five cards have been flipped, our next shot gains plus 30% amp damage. If the cards flipped equals aces and eights, our next two shots get the amp damage bonus. If we get a full house with the flipped cards, the next three shots gain the amp damage, and if we get four of a kind, it is the next four shots. Amp damage is labeled as multiplicative in the behind the scenes damage calculations that take place on each shot fired in the Division 2, and this means that these shots have even more damage than a shot bolstered by additive damage. So in simple terms, we want to try and stack as much multiplicative damage bonuses onto our build as possible for the maximum damage output. Jumping over to the body armor, and I am using the named Chain Killer brand set item, which is part of the new Walker Harrison Co. brand set. 
the one piece bonus for this gear set is really underpowered at just plus 5% weapon damage, but that is not the reason we are using this brand set. Perfect Headhunter, the talent on this named body armor is what you are after, as it adds amp damage to our build. After killing an enemy with a headshot, your next weapon hit within 30 seconds deals an additional 150% of that killing blow's damage. Damage is capped to 800% of your weapon damage. Now this is raised to 1250% if your headshot damage is greater than 150%. So the idea here is to land our first headshot on as easy a target as possible and that kill will proc Perfect Headhunter. After that, we just aim for the head and chain those kills back to back to back and you get the idea. Using this exact build and bolstered by squad mates buffs, I have touched up into the 60 million damage area which is way overkill for most NPCs up to and including heroic difficulty. The backpack is from the Providence brand set, which grants the build plus 15% headshot damage, and I have chosen the Vigilance talent for plus 25% weapon damage. Now for attributes, I have chosen to go with headshot damage and critical hit damage along with a headshot damage offensive mod. Vigilance is one of those damage talents that is a double-edged sword. On one side, it buffs our build up nicely with that plus 25% weapon damage. But on the other side, if we take any incoming damage, it deactivates for 4 seconds and we lose all that damage. You could also use the named Providence backpack, The Gift, for a bit more damage and 1 second less on the cooldowns. It's really up to you. Many times, if I am running solo and the NPCs seem to have aim that is superhuman, I will switch over to my alternate Providence backpack with composure on it is I do lose that extra plus 10% weapon damage in the switch, but I don't lose the 15% damage when I am grazed by a stray bullet from across the map. Now down to testing, and I have tried so many different combinations on this setup that I've lost track of how many times I've switched it up. I tried even more Providence and Araldi brand set pieces. The Hollow Man mask, the Sacrifice body armor with perfect glass cannon, Araldi and Providence body armor with Focus or Spotter, I even rolled Headhunter onto a suitable Providence body armor piece. On the backpacks, I tried using the Aces backpack, Providence and Araldi pieces with Composure, Companion, and Concussion. I even tried using Contractor's gloves, Box's prayer knee pads, and Sawyer's. And nothing was able to push out more damage for me than this gear setup. For the weaponry, I am using the Nemesis exotic sniper rifle, as it is the hardest hitting marksman rifle currently in the game. For title update 10, the Nemesis got a base damage increase and the headshot damage on the digital scope was upped to 45%. If you are patient and can hold down the trigger to reach full charge, Electromagnetic Accelerator can add up to 100% weapon damage to your next shot. You could also use the named Classic M44, the White Death, for the high base damage and boosted headshot damage or something like the M700 Carbon. For both of these alternate selections, you want maximum weapon damage, maximum headshot damage, and the ranger weapon talent as it adds plus 2% amped up weapon damage for every 5 meters you are distanced from your targets. However, if you are going full ham and want as much damage per shot as possible, nothing compares to the nemesis. For the secondary weapon, you could really run whatever you want, and I will usually use my maxed out classic M1A or an assault rifle with a high rate of fire. For the skills, I will usually use a Fixer Drone and the Revive Hive. But just to mix it up, I can also add in the Sniper Turret or the Booster Hive. But for the most part, your damage output is centered around the weapon and gear you are using and less about the skills you have equipped. My overall build stats are decent, with 146.8% weapon damage without the 25% Vigilance bonus or any of the Amp damage bonuses once Aces or Perfect Headhunter procs. My headshot stats are currently at 302.2% and I have just started to spec my shade watch into headshot damage. And once I am able to fully optimize this setup, I expect I will be somewhere between 320 and 330% headshot damage once fully completed. In the overall scheme of builds in the Division 2, this is not the most efficient way to push out damage, as a well-crafted M1A rifle setup will easily out DPS this build, but that is not the point of an MMR headshot build. What we are going for is single target damage and elimination with one shot, and for that, this build excels. 
I'm going to end this one right here, and as always, I look forward to reading your feedback in the comment section below. If you haven't yet smashed that sub button, please do so, and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another upload notification from my YouTube channel. If you liked the video, rate it with a thumbs up, if not with a thumbs down. Links to support my full-time content creation outside of YouTube include Patreon and Teespring, both in the video description. Follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts concerning most things gaming related, and remember to stay tuned for clips of me using this exact one-shot sniper build in heroic level missions. And until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off. Top floor. Take the stairs to the right of the elevators and work your way up. That's what you get, you dumb sons of bitches. You doing all right there, Kelso? As long as I'm not breathing asbestos, I've lasted a lot of damage.